Thank you, Jesus. You are giving us another week to come together and worship you. Hallelujah. Welcome to Word of Flame Tabernacle, all of you that are tuning in. We want you to gather around, for God wants to speak to us here this night, this day. I want us just to pray and welcome the Spirit of the Lord in this place. I want us to really pray the power down. I want us to really focus on our praise and our words and what we cry out before the Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We worship you. You are God in heaven who looks down upon this earth. You see everything. You know everything. Nothing surprises you, God. For God, you are the healer. You are the one providing strength. But when we're needed, we thank you, Lord, for your healing hand. It's not just only upon this nation, but it's upon all those that are crying out before you. And God, we cry out, Lord, knowing, Lord, that you're going to move in a mighty way. You're going to change, transform minds and change situation and bring forth healing and bring forth blessing and most importantly bring forth salvation hallelujah to the king of glory hallelujah can you praise the lord with me can you praise the lord with me can you praise the lord with me i need you to open up your mouth clap your hands give god some praise let's praise him let's praise him let's praise him let's praise him somebody needs to Praise the Lord in your living room. Praise the Lord in your bedroom. Praise the Lord in your kitchen. Somebody needs to praise the Lord. I don't feel you. I don't feel you. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Somebody stand up to their feet and begin to shout hallelujah in your homes. Let your children hear your cry. And let your spouse hear your cry. Cry out before the Lord. Cry out before the Lord. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Lord God, I love you. Oh, come on, begin to speak to him. I want you to make a giant prayer room right where you are. Right where you are. Forget about everything and just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. The enemy's pushing forward, but we are pushing harder. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, yes, I feel you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are doing a marvelous work. You are changing lives. You are still moving in the midst of this dark time. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord and give him some more praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God. We had an awesome prayer meeting last night. Those that were uh, tuned in on the prayer meeting, we talked about trusting the Lord. And uh, the Bible speaks of this, and Jeremiah talked about trusting the Lord. And we began to, to pray that God puts more trust in us, trust in our hearts, and in our minds. We thank you for those that tune in. Praise God, praise God. As we welcome the Spirit of the Lord in this place, I feel led to just say a special prayer for those that are watching, for those that are tuning in. I just feel led in the Holy Ghost to pray a special prayer. Just bow your heads where you are. Just bow your heads where you are. Jesus, we love you. God, and we need you. God, I know that there may be some fear. God, I know that there may be some shaking going on in the depths of our soul. But Lord God, we know you are a God that provided peace that surpasseth understanding.
God, and I pray that your peace rest upon their homes, rest upon their mind. Everyone that's watching, God, I pray the peace of God rest upon them. Every fear, every pain that you're feeling, every sickness that you feel, you may feel that there's some sickness in your body. I chase it away from your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing. I speak blessing in this dark time blessing over your home blessing over your mind blessing in your heart and whatever devil that is lying trying to still kill and destroy I bind Satan, I bind his minions, I bind the dark spirits, leave their presence, leave their minds, leave their homes right now in the name of Jesus Christ I speak it now, hallelujah let's clap our hands before the Lord God you are reigning peace upon us in Jesus mighty name amen amen it's good to be with you once again here at word of flame tabernacle there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes I want to thank the instrument players for being here I want to thank um, the the media team for working and making sure things work. We started a little late today, but God is always on time. And we thank you for tuning in today. Praise God, we got a special, special presentation for you tonight. We want Sister Dana, we're gonna have her come. Praise God, amen, hallelujah. I'm getting a note here, praise God. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah, praise God. Well, we're going to play a special, a special announcement. This was pre-recorded, praise God. We're going to play it, sorry I misspoke that, amen. I think she's going to come out of her here. But we want you to meditate on the Lord as they play this tape, praise God, this video, in Jesus' name. Right. When you come to my rescue,
Hallelujah. Great God. the Lord. I hope you enjoyed that beautiful thing, and I hope your mind is being filled with the joy of the Lord. Um, I want to apologize early for the internet. We are having technical difficulties, but we are going to keep going, um, and we will have the recording up as well, but we want you to stay tuning in because you know things may just clear up. We well, thank you once again for being with us. And, and we want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart on behalf of Pastor James and Word of Flame. Welcome to Word of Flame Tabernacle. I love the Lord and I know he's doing something in the midst of us and he's doing something in the midst of you. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I want to direct your attention to giving. Um, we want you to be able to give and support the work here in the city of Grayson. Um, you should see on the screen three ways to give. We want to encourage you to give with a cheerful heart. I don't care. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. Um, give something. Um, and uh, it will bless you. Not only will it bring a blessing to the ministry and to the church, but it will also bring a blessing to you. You cannot outgive God. I'm a living testimony of that. You cannot outgive God. The more you give God, the more He will bless you. So we want to encourage you give, and it will come back to you in good measure. Press down, shaking together, runneth over. God said, try me and see if I would not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you would not have room to receive it. It's good to see you all today, all of you on your couches, your smiling faces, those that are praying, shouting hallelujah, sitting down, standing. It's good to see you all. Thank you for worshiping with us. What that saying says, um, we are together, but we are a part. A part, we are together. And we thank you for being here with us. Um, how many of you are ready for the word of the Lord? Praise God. I said, how many of you are ready for the word of the Lord? If you are ready for the word of the Lord, I want you to type in Facebook, praise the Lord. Type, I'm ready for the word, whatever. Make some noise in your home and make some noise in the chat box that we may recognize you we are excited for the word here tonight our special speakers no stranger to word of flame tabernacle not a special speaker but a member of word of flame a minister who studies and preaches the word and he has blessed us time after time after time every time he spoke and we're so excited to have our brother minister brother leonard here to preach the word of god to you look at your neighbor and say get ready i didn't hear you look at your neighbor and say get ready praise god let's stand up wherever you are let's clap your hands before the lord as brother leonard comes and preaches the word of the lord hallelujah Thank you, Lord. We praise. Praise the Lord, church. I said, praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Hasn't God been good to you? Hasn't God been good to you? Hallelujah. You know He's been good to you. Kind of get you to say Amen if you're on your sofa, if you're in your recliner. God has kept you COVID free. He has kept your family free. He has kept your health. He has kept your strength. Can I get you to say thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for me? Amen. Amen. Somebody ought to praise him right now. Somebody ought to praise him right now. I feel this tonight. I don't know about you, but God has been good. God has kept me. God has blessed me. Even when I didn't see it, God has kept me. Come on, somebody. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
First, I want to give honor to Pastor James, our associate pastor, Kevin. I want to thank all the minister, elders, and friends for allowing me the opportunity to come here tonight to speak to you, to give you a word that God has put on my heart. And I thank you. I want to thank my wife because God provides. If you don't know anything else, just know that in the midst of it, God, he will provide. If you are here tonight and you have your Bibles or you have your, your text, we're going to go to a uh, familiar scripture. Job, 14th chapter, the 7th through the 9th verse. The 7th through the 9th verse. Job, 14th chapter. And it reads, for there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And the tender, the tender branch thereof will not cease. It will not die. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet... It is highlighted. It is in italic. It says, yet through the scent of water, it will sprout again. And it will bring forth bowls like a plant. Let us pray. Father, tonight, I thank you for all that you have done. Father God, I thank you for your word that you have put on my heart to deliver to your people, Father God. Right now, Father God, I ask that you speak through me. Father God, I ask that you work in me. Take over my mind. Take over my mouth. Take over my footsteps. Lead me. Guide me to deliver the word in the way that you would have me to deliver it, Father God. And I will give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. And if I have a title for this tonight, it will be there is still hope. I don't know who needs to hear that tonight, but I just want you to know, even throughout this pandemic and what we've been going through, that there is still hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. Sometimes we can say we can build our hope and our trust in Christ. Some people say they want you to hope for the best. Some people say you can set your hope to put standards on it. Some people want you to live in hope. And then when you leave your work, you tell everybody, I hope all goes well. You know, Proverbs 13 and 12 says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Let me tell you something. When your hopes are delayed, when your hopes are denied, when your hopes are deferred and you can't grasp them, you can't feel them, you can't reach them, and it makes your heart sick. Job's life is about pain. It's about trial. And his hope was deferred. His plans were postponed. Job lost everything and everyone that he loved. Job was robbed of his health. He was robbed of his happiness. Job's confidence in God and his confidence in himself was shaken to the very core. And Job, like many of us, was left with more questions than we got answers. You see, we can look at Job's story and we can see how the story ends and we can read the back of the book. But he was not aware of that yet in the middle of his trial because all of this pressure and all of these questions and all of these hopes were gone. That's why this great godly man, he lost hope for a while. Job 14, 7 and 8 said, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and the tender branch thereof will 
not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground. It's one thing to trust in something when it hasn't failed. But it's something completely different to see where something has fallen itself and you still trust its potential to bring life again. You see, it's very easy to start trusting in stuff that we have never seen go down. But what do you do with your faith when you have to trust in something that has fallen and it looks like it is about to die? Job put his confidence in something that could not withstand the acts of the woodsman. Job said that even though you have succumbed to the things of this world, I still believe that God can bring something good out of you. Can I let you know tonight that even though you have succumbed to the things of this world, God will still bring something good out of your life. Even when you have fallen, yes, we all have fallen. We all had crashed. But even while you were just laying there, I still believe that God can bring something good out of your life. I know it's hard to receive that because so many people have told you that the type of mess and the type of stuff that you have did that you can't go back from it. But I come to preach hope and good news to somebody that no matter how hard you have fallen, no matter how far you have fallen, that no matter how loud the crash was, I still believe that God is going to do something good with your life. I still believe that God is going to do something good. Now, I dare you, while you are on the couch, to slap somebody a high five and tell them God is going to do something good with your life. Because I still believe that God will do something. Now, tell your neighbor, I still believe that you're going to get your family back. I still believe that your help is coming through. I still believe that you're going to win the case because I believe in you. Because even though you have fallen, even though it looks like everything has gone wrong, I still believe. Because I don't care what you have fallen from. I don't care what you have fallen into. But I still believe that God is going to do what he said he was going to do with your life. I still believe that God is going to bring you out of the situation. I still believe that the deal is on. I still believe that God is going to use you for his glory. Now, somebody believe it. If you believe it, give him praise right now like you believe it. You see, Job, he had an excitement about the impending change. You want to know how I know, how I know Job had an excitement about the impending change? Because in verse 9, he said, Yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth bowls like a plant. Yet through the scent of water. If you want to know Job, you have to understand the power of yet. The reality is this. Some of you have to look at your circumstances, and even though they are pointing in one direction, you have to look at them and say, God can still do something good with my life. You see, Job understood that, and he said, yet I will still praise God in the midst of my problems. He said, though he slay me, yet I will praise him. The Bible says that yet after the scent, it didn't say when it started raining. He said, yet after the scent of rain. You see, city people don't appreciate that kind of stuff that country folk do. Country folk understand not rain, but the smell of rain. You see, I know some people who have never got a degree or a certificate in meteorology, but all they had to do was just step out on the porch with the sun shining real bright, not a cloud in the sky, and all they had to do was take in one good deep breath and say, baby, close the windows, close the doors, let's get inside, it's getting ready to rain. Somebody needs to know that God doesn't need the rain. Somebody needs to know that God doesn't need to have the rain. You see, some of our problems is we get happy when it starts to rain. But the Bible says when the smell of rain gets in the air, that the tree that was dead will start to bud again. 
Even before it gets rained on, it starts coming forth. I don't know who needs to hear this, but before the blessing come, he is going to make you fruitful at the sips of the scent. You see, God gave Job a sign. And Job's sign was a scent of rain. See, a lot of us miss signs in our life when God has given us a sign. And we need to pay attention to those signs. But you see, in this text, it was a scent. But I dare you to take a good sniff and smell it. Smell it. Smell it in the natural. Smell it in the heavens. Smell it in your spirit. Smell it in the Holy Ghost. Because there is a rain that is coming to your life and your land is going to rejoice over it. Now look, it just hasn't happened yet. But just look, it just smells like it is about to happen. The Bible says the tree that was dead starts spudding even before the rain starts falling. Now hear me on this. If the tree got sense enough to respond when God gives a scent, it looks like us born again, the Holy Ghost filled believer, ought to be able to praise him before the miracle happens. You ought to be able to bless him, not because you feel the rain, not because you see the rain, but just because you smell the rain. I want you to look at somebody on your sofa and say, I smell it, I smell it, I smell it, I smell it. Some, come on, some of y'all ain't saying that to nobody. Look at the person next to you. Say, I smell it, I smell it. You see, I'm not the one for spiritism. I'm not the one to refer to religious practices in a gesture or a mixture that is not coming for me to preach tonight. But I do know that there is wisdom in some other practices. Now, hear me when I say this. The Native American, they understood something about this. Even when they didn't understand who needed to get the credit, they understood that if they needed rain and you could smell it on the horizon, they had to do what they started doing was a dance. Was a dance. I wonder if I can get some of y'all off that couch to start dancing. I wonder if I can get to touch your neighbor and say, I don't want you to rush into a rain dance because I feel it. I feel it. I want you to get you into a rain dance. Tell them, don't go get your umbrella. I want you to go get your bucket. I want you to go get your wash pail. I want you to open your windows because I hear a sound of the abundance of rain. Now I want you to praise him for the rain. Can you praise him right now for the rain that is coming? Because they say your blessings will come. Your blessings are going to come. I praise him right now for the rain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I'm going to bring this to a close. Some of you may know that you may have picked, you've been cut down. You may feel hopeless, but you are not. As long as you have life, as long as your blood is warm and warm in your veins, as long as God is breathing the breath of fresh air into you, you have hope. Jesus Christ is wanting to give you that hope right now. Your best branches in life are about to spring forth. Get that scent of water and watch God bless you. For John 7 chapter, the 37 and the 38 verse reads that in the last day, that great day of feast, Jesus, he stood, he cried, saying, if any man thirst, if any one of us thirst, let him come unto me. You see, Jesus is a well that never runs dry. Jesus is a well that never runs dry. Jesus said, Come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly. Isaiah 41, 17 and the 18 verse says that when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst. It says, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, 
will not forsake them. That's what it says. But wait a minute, God. It looks, it's, it, it looks, it's so messed up, God. It's, it's so dysfunctional, God. To look at it. It's, it's dead. It's destroyed. It's dry. There is nothing left of it. But God said that you have not accounted on my supernatural ability. God says, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of valleys. He says, I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Well, if there is hope for you, there is hope for me, for every family, for every situation, for every trouble, for every trial that you have been going through, for every sickness, for there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. And I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a good, timely word. And such a time of turmoil, confusion, destruction, people losing their jobs, people losing other things, their sanity. But for those that are Christian, we have hope in the Lord. Thank you, Brother Leonard, for preaching such an awesome word. We need the hope of God in our lives. Let me pray for you. My God, in the name of Jesus, there is a theme going on this week. And God, it's about trusting in you and putting our hope in you. God, I pray even now a supernatural power of hope rest upon your people. God, that hope, Lord, letting us know that we will be all right. But God, we hope in you. We put our trust in you. And God, though that tree as if it was cut from the top, long as it's planted by the waters, it shall return. No matter what the enemy does to us, we will come back stronger, with more power, with more anointing. God, you will reign in us even more because we put our hopes in you. Now, God, every home, bless them. God, remove every dark thing, every fear, every pressure. And God, let us learn to put our trust and hope in you. We give you praise, God. And God, I pray that your spirit reign with everyone, everyone that's watching. And you give them peace tonight and peace until the next appointed time we meet. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. You have an awesome night from Word of Flame. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. On behalf of Pastor Alan James, have a blessed night in Jesus' name. your neighbor say neighbor he's about to shake your foundation with your praise